Welcome to another physics video. Today we're going to have a look at some past paper questions related to the electromagnetic effect. I've done a video discussing everything about electromagnetic effect, so I'll be linking that in the description if you are interested. Today we're going to have a look at some past paper questions for the IGCSE syllabus in physics. Okay, so further ado, let's begin. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be using my mouse so I really um, from advance, I am sorry if the handwriting is bad for the working out. Now, for the theoretical questions, I will just simply be saying them, um, so you can observe. Okay, so let's start with number one. All these questions will also be down in the description. I am using the site PMT, physicsandmathstutor.com, and I have selected topic four, electromagnetic effect, question paper one. So we're going to try to do as many question paper, um, sort of post papers, we're going to try to do as many of them. Okay, figure 8.1 shows a bar magnet that is suspended by a spring over a coil and the coil is connected to a center 0 millivolts meter. Okay, center 0 millivolts meter. Okay, and then it says, uh, so here's the spring, remember, um, here's the magnet, okay, and here's the center um, 0 millivolts and here's the spring, okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so I already know this should be related to magnetic induction because whenever you see a magnet and a coil, you already know that something dealing with electromagnetic induction will happen. Okay, so it says the lower end of the magnet is pushed down into the upper end and is held at rest. So this end of this is, is simply pushed down. So the movement is going down, pushing it inwards to the end of the coil. So now it is right around here, so the end of the coil, and it says that during the movement, an EMF is induced in the coil. And then it says the meter shows a deflection to the right and then returns to zero. Explain this EMF is induced. Explain why this EMF is induced. Now, remember I talked about the sort of way that this question should be related to electromagnetic induction? Now, EMF is simply produced when the magnetic field lines is cut by the coil. Okay, so the magnetic field lines of this magnet, okay, and, and I've discussed this in my theory uh, videos, where a magnet has sort of a magnetic field line, okay, and this uh, coil also has a magnetic field line. So when these two magnetic field lines are cut, okay, when they are cut by the turn or by the coil, an EMF is induced, okay, so when the magnetic field lines of a magnet is cut by the turn or the coil, then an EMF is induced. It then says, state what happens to the needle of the meter when the magnet is released from rest and pulled up. So remember, it was being pulled down, and now it is being pulled up. Now, a key uh, thing in the question was saying that the meter shows a deflection to the right. Okay, so meaning when I put it down, it's to the right. So simply that would mean that if I take it back up, it should be to the left. Okay, so this one is to the left. Okay, this means that when I uh, do the outward motion, it will be to the left. The, mag the magnet continues to oscillate up and down, moving in and out of the coil with each oscillation. Okay, that simply means that we are sort of uh, putting it inward, outward, inward, outward, inward, outward. That would simply mean that it's going to go from right to left, right to left, right to left. Okay, so it's going to alternate from right to left, right to left. Okay, because you are doing the motion of putting it back in, putting it back up. So that is in motion. Figure 8.2 shows a transformer, okay, so this is how a transformer looks like, and you can usually identify a transformer with, um, you know, the primary coil and the secondary coil. So if you see two co coils on different sides, you know it's going to be a transformer. The primary coil P is connected to 240 volts main supply, has 8,000 turns, and the secondary coil S has um, 6 volts to a lamp. Okay, so it says calculate the number of turns, and remember turns is the... Uh, calculated simply uh, when you cross multiply okay so for example you have uh, 8,000 turns so this is the primary sorry let me just write that again so um, let me have a look at this so this is the primary turn so that's 8,000 okay we don't know how much the secondary uh, coil has so it's remember it's telling us that the primary coil has 8,000 turns secondary we don't know we're multiplying this with um, uh, with, um, I believe it is 240 over 6, okay? 
Then you cross multiply. Okay, remember 240 is the voltage. This is the 240 voltage for the primary coil and 6 for that. So then you take up your calculator and I'm going to first multiply 8006. I'm going to cross multiply now. So I'm going to do 8000 times 6, which is 48,000. So 48,000 divided by 240. So if I divide that by 240, I am getting the answer as 200 turns. Okay. So 200 turns is the answer. The next question says that the current in a primary coil is 0 0.05 amperes. And then it says, calculate the power input to the transformer. Okay, so it is saying the current, so which is I, okay, current is represented as I, it is 0 0.045. And it says calculate power. So remember, power is equals to voltage times current, it's as simple as that. And because it's saying primary coil, the voltage, remember right here, is uh, 240 volts. Okay, remember 6 volts was secondary, but 240 was for the primary coil. So if I do 240 and I multiply that with 0 0.05, um, 0 .05, 0 .05, I will get 12 and the unit is watts. Okay, watts, 12 watts. The next question says that 90% of the power input to the transformer is transferred to the lamp. Okay, so the power, 90% of it, has been transferred to the lamp. Okay, so what you can do for such a type of question. Okay, so 90% of the power. Okay, so the first thing you do is find 90% of the power. Okay, and that would be simplified as 90 over 100 times 12 okay that will give me the power input okay that will give me the power inputs okay not the current but the power input so if i do 90 percent of 12 so i'm going to do 90 percent of 12 i'm getting 10.8 now remember i have to find current okay so what you simply have to do okay is um now i have 10.8 so if I do 10.8 uh, divided by um, 240, um, I should get my answer. Okay, sorry, not by 240, by 6. Okay, so after this, actually, uh, I have to multiply. This is my power, remember. So this is my power input. And I'm supposed to find the current in the lamp. Okay, the current in the lamp. Okay. So, therefore, I would do 10.8 times 200 over 6. 240 over 6. Okay? So, simply, um, that should give you the answer of the thing. Okay? Because we use this formula, ISVS is equals to IPVP. Okay? So, that's the formula that we use. And uh, you should get a value of 1.8. Okay, and uh, for current, it is amperes, okay, 1.8. Hopefully, you do understand that. Okay, so this would be the IS for uh, here. Okay, so um, that is how it works. Okay, so um, with that being said, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to another transformer question. It says, name the process which... Uh, by which a change in current in the primary coil will cause a change in current in the secondary coil. So changing in current is simply called mutual induction. So the answer is mutual induction, or you can say electromagnetic induction. Okay. So just the material that can be used for coils. Okay. Now, uh, remember it's saying that this coil is going to carry current. Okay. And we know that with the help um, of you know chemistry we know that copper is a very good conductor okay so that means that copper would be the best conductor for this but at the same time you can also say silver okay because uh, you know it's a good conductor but silver is expensive therefore you should not write silver in such a type of question but instead you have to give the obvious or the correct answer which would be a uh, copper okay we move on b it says the input to the primary coil p is 240 volts and the coil has 8000 turns of a wire okay it has 8000 turns 
The voltage obtained by terminal A, B is 12 volts. So from A to B, which means it's here, is 12 volts. So that's on the secondary side. Let's calculate the number of 10. So this is a similar type of question uh, to the previous one. So that will be 8,000 um, over the 10s, which we are unaware of, times 240 over 12 volts. So I'm going to multiply 8,000 by 12 and divide that by 240, and I should get 400 tens. The resistor connected between A and B um, is replaced by four 12 volt lamps and is connected uh, in parallel. The current of each lamp is 1.5. Okay, and if, when it's 100% efficient, that simply means there's no loss of power. Okay, it's saying calculate current. Okay, so for this type of question, the first thing I need to find the current in these four lamps. Okay, so I'm going to simply do that by multiplying 4 times 1.5. So 4 times 1.5 should give me about 6. So that's going to be the current of 6 amperes. And then using the formula, okay, using the formula of um, IPVP equals to ISVS, we can get the current. Okay, so remember, um, what you can do is the current... Uh, in the coil P here. So coil P is the primary coil. Okay, and we have found, uh, I believe, the current in the secondary, have we? No, we haven't yet found it. But it is 12 volts. Okay. So what you simply have to do is um, find the resistance. And remember, resistance is voltage over current. Okay, so voltage over current. And then after finding vo uh, resistance, you can then off, uh, substitute the values of current to find, uh, sorry, you can substitute uh, the values to find the current in the thing. And the answer should be 0 0.2 if you do the following. Okay, and let's just confirm that the um, formula for resistance is... Uh, Sorry, is uh, voltage over current, as you guys can see right here, voltage over current. So if you do voltage over current and substitute the values, you should get your answer, okay? Uh, so voltage will be total voltage, which is 12 volts, and then, you know, total current, which is 6, so that should be 2, okay? So that's going to be your resistance, and after calculating this, you should find your current. Okay, so we have a different, uh, a similar type of question now here. It says the solenoid is held at the vertical position and the solenoid is connected to sensitive uh, center zero ammeter and the vertical bar magnet is held stationary at position X and up. So this is a sort of say, a similar question to the one previous. It is saying the magnet is released and it falls through, so it goes down, okay? And uh, the sensitive ammeter shows a small deflection to the left. Why does it show a deflection to the left? This is because EMF, uh, this is because the magnetic field line is cut, therefore EMF is induced, and once an EMF is induced, current is also induced, okay? So that is the answer for that, okay? So then it says the magnet passes uh, the middle point of the solenoid and continues to fall, and it reaches position Y. So it reaches position Y, and it says describe and explain what you observe on the ammeter as the magnet falls uh, from the middle point of the solenoid to position y okay so here you first of all say is the meter will deflect in the opposite direction right now current is moving like this because remember north is here so current will be moving like this when it move comes here okay it's going to be this way okay so that's sort of how sorry it's going to be the opposite way okay so uh, sort of that's how it uh, should be doing. Okay, the previous one was correct. Okay, so that's how you do it. So, but you don't need to know that. But all you have to say is that there will be an opposite direction in the meter. It will shift to the right to be more specific, and uh, the deflection is greater because we know that one of the effects is that if the magnet is passing to you know quicker, then more EMF is induced, um, and therefore there will be more current, and therefore there will be a greater deflection. Uh, because the magnet is moving much faster and also uh, more field lines are cut per second okay
Okay, so more few lines are cut per second because it's going faster. So that will give you the four marks that you need. Um, state two changes to the apparatus that would increase the initial deflection of the ammeter. To increase the deflection of the ammeter, use a stronger magnet and use a solenoid with more tens. So hopefully you enjoyed this short video. Um, thank you for uh, listening to it. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, goodbye.